This is why you don't put big bit books by your bed. Let's just scoot that over. Okay. Well. Who is hot in here? Where do we leave off? Because of the angel of music, of course. I don't follow. Yes, he forbids her to. He forbids her? The angel of music forbids her to marry. Oh, he, oh, he forbids her without forbidding her. It's like this. He tells her that if she got married, she would never hear him, hear him again. That's all. And that he would go away forever. So you understand, she can't let the angel of music go. It's quite natural. Yes, yes. Echoed Raoul submissive, submissively. It's quite natural. Besides, I thought Christine had told you all that when she met you at Paros, where, where she went with her good with her good genius. Oh, she went to Paros with her good genius, did she? That is to say she, that is to say he arranged to meet her down there, in Paros churchyard, at Diade's grave. He promised to play her the resurrection of Lazarus on her father's violin. Raoul de Chani rose and with an authoritative air and pronounced these primitory of words. Madam, you will have the goodness to tell me where that genius lives. The old lady, the old lady did not seem surprised at this in, indiscreet command. She raised her eyes and said, in heaven! Such simplicity baffled him. He did not know what in what to say in the presence of this candid and perfect faith in a genius who came down nightly from heaven to haunt the dressing rooms at the opera. He now realized the possible state of the mind of a girl brought up between the superstitious fiddler and a visionary old lady, and he shuddered when he thought of the consequences of it all. Is Christine still a good girl? He asked suddenly in spite of himself. I swear it, as I hope to be saved, exclaimed the old woman, who this time seemed to be incensed. And if you doubt it, sir, I don't know what you are here for. Raoul tore his gloves. How long has she known this genius? About three months. Yes, it's quite three months since he began to give her lessons. The Viscount threw up his arms with a gesture of despair. The genius gives her lessons? And where, pray? Now that she has gone away with him, I can't say. But up to a fortnight ago, in Christine's dressing room, it would be possible in this little f flat, the whole house would hear them. Whereas at the opera house at eight o'clock in the morning, there was no, d there was no one about. Do you see? Yes, I see, I see, cried the Viscount. And he, and he hurriedly took leave of Madame Valeris, who asked herself if the young nobleman was not a little off his head. He, he walked home to his brother's house in a pitiful state. He could have struck himself, banged his head against the walls. To think that he had believed in her innocence, in her purity, the angel of music. He knew him now. He saw him. It, beyond, it was beyond a doubt. Some unspeakable ten, tenor, tenor, 
a good-looking jackanapes who mouthed and simpered as he sang. He thought himself as absurd and as wretched as he could be. Oh, what a miserable little insignificant silly young man was Monsieur Le v Victim de Chanty, thought Ralph furiously. And she, what a bold and damnable sly creature. His brother was waiting for him, and Ralph fell into his arms like a child. The Count counseled him, without asking for explanations, and Ralph would certainly have hesitated before telling him. The story of the Angel of Music. His brother suggested taking him out to dinner. Overcome as he was with despair, Rao would probably have refused any invitation that evening if the Count had not, as an, an induce, inducement, told him that the lady of his thoughts had been seen. The night before, in the company of the other sex in the Bowis. At first, the Viscount refused to believe, but he, but he received such exact details that he ceased protesting. She had been seen, it appeared, driving in a bro broham with the window down. She seemed to be slowly taking in the icy night air. There was a glorious moon shining. She was recognized beyond a doubt. As for a comparison, only his shadowy outline was distinguished leaning back in the dark. The carriage was going at a walking pace in a lonely drive behind the grandstand at Longchamp. Raoul dressed in a frantic haste, preparing to forget his distress by flinging himself, as people say, into the vortex of pleasure. Alas, he was a very sorry guest, and leaving his brother early found himself by ten o'clock in the evening in a cab behind the Longchamp race course. It was bitterly cold. The road seemed deserted and very bright under the moonlight. He told the driver to wait for him patiently at the corner of a near turning and hiding himself as well as he could, stood stamping his feet to keep warm. He had been indulging in his healthy exercise for half, half an hour or so when, the, when a carriage turned the corner of the road and came quietly in his direction. and at a walking pace. As it approached, he saw that a woman was leaning her head from the window, and suddenly the moon shed a pale gleam over her features. Christine! The scarred name of his love had sprung from his heart and lips, and his lips. He could not keep it back. He would have given anything to withdraw it, for that name, proclaimed in the stillness of the night, had acted as though it were a pre preconcerted preconcerted signal for a furious rush on the part of the whole turnout, which dash, dashed past him before he could put into execution his plan for of leaping at the horse's heads. Cow the carriage the carriage window had been closed and the girl's face had disappeared. The Braham behind which he was now running was no more than a black spot on the white road. He called out again, Christine No reply. And he stopped in the midst of the silence with a lackluster eye. He stared down that cold, desolate road, and into the pale dead of night. Nothing was cooler than his heart, nothing half so dead. He had loved an angel, and now he despised a woman. Raoul, how that little fairy of a, the north was trifled with, has trifled with you. Was it really, was it really necessary to have 
so fresh a y and young a face, a forehead so shy and always ready to cover itself with the pink blush of modesty in order to pass in the lonely night, in a carriage and pair accompanied by a mysterious lover. Surely there should be some limit to hypocrisy and lying. She had no, she had passed without answering his cry and he was thinking of dying and he, he was 20 years old. His valet found him in the morning sitting on his bed. He had not undressed and the servant feared at the sight of his face that some disaster had occurred. Ralph snatched his letter from the man's hands. He had recognized Christine's paper and handwriting. She's <coughs> she said, Dear, go to the mass ball at the opera on the night after tomorrow. At 12 o'clock, be in the little room behind the chim chimney place of a big crush room. Stand near the door that leads to the rotunda. Don't mention this appointment to anyone on earth. Wear a white domino and be carefully masked as you love me don't let yourself be recognized Christine chapter 9 at the masked ball the envelope was covered with mud and unstamped it bore the words to be handed to monsieur le vicomte Raoul de Chanty with the address in pencil it must have been flung out in the hope that the passerby would pick up the note and deliver it, which was what happened. The note had been picked up on the pavement of the place de la Opera House. Rao read over it with fevered eyes. No more was needed to revive his hope. The sober picture which he had for the moment imagined imagined of uh, Christine forgetting her duty to herself made way for his original conception of an unfortunate innocent child the victim of imper impertinence and exaggerated sensibility to what extent at this time was she really a victim whose prisoner was she into what whirlpool had she been dragged? He asked himself these questions with a cruel anguish. But even this pain seemed endurable beside the frenzy into which he was thrown at the thought of a lying and deceitful Christine. What had happened? What influence had she undergone? What monster had carried her off? And by what means? By what means? Why do you want to 